What is going on YouTube, it's your boy Willie Westside here bringing you back with another video today. Now today we are once again hopping into Super Battle Rogue team building on Dokken Battle. We're going on the Dokken Battle Builder website, which I have not been linking in my descriptions, but I will starting now, and looking at what's the best extreme strength team you can bring. Now I do want to preface that I'm not going to be building an exact team, but rather give you some options. This one's going to be more limited than most, but I'm not trying to build your team for you, rather give you a bunch of options you can run, as well as an optimal team structure. I also want to apologize about stuff on my bed, it's been a long day, that's why this is going up so late at night. Um, also, there is some problems with my Wi-Fi right now at my apartment complex, so I apologize if this isn't up on time or on the same day. I am recording it in one day, but I don't know if it's going to be up. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in. Um, excuse me. The first thing you'll notice is that the miasma and pool of units is a lot smaller. That's because Extreme Strength really doesn't have a lot of great options for you to run. Um, the options they do have are really good, and I would recommend running a pretty standard team. The problem is trying to build an Extreme Strength team is actually fairly difficult. I love Extreme Strength. It's one of my teams I have on Global that I love to run. The problem is the units are so sparse that trying to build a team for it is actually really difficult. So, first thing you're going to notice is you're going to have to bring... Janemba. And I think that is the most obvious because he's the leader. Um, Rose doesn't work. I mean, he gives the same boost, but he doesn't work because of the way his passive is. So you're going to want to run that Janemba. Um, next thing you're going to bring, obviously, is this new Rose. He just hits incredibly hard. He gives everyone key, so it absolves a lot of your issues with linking and all that kind of stuff. And he is just a guarantee. On any team he fits in, you're going to want that Rose. Now, if you've not watched D Free's video where he takes on extreme strength, I'm going to link it down below to give you kind of proof of what I'm talking about. But the best unit, I think, for this is this Extreme Z Awaken Broly, which is funny because he was originally one of the worst extreme strength um, characters in the game. Um, and now I would argue that he's actually better than his LR, uh, LR counterpart for this game type. And he's free to play. If you were around during any of the celebrations where they gave you that red godstone, you could have had that Broly. And he's one of the oldest token fest exclusives I meaning everyone probably has them already and that is just amazing to me to think that you can have that unit on your team i mean he's free that's just, that, that's incredible that is that is a pretty awesome thing for me i think that one of the best units is essentially free now you are going to have to extreme z awaken him if you have him in his regular tur form he's not going to do well that dropping his defense to zero is the worst thing you can have for a Super Battle Road, but when you get him to level 140 and when you get him to SA15, uh, his super attack actually boosts his attack and defense by 80%. So he gets rid of the flat modifier, he does increase his defense rather than debuff it, and that's why he's better than his LR counterpart. Um, it's also pretty easy to rainbow him if you've been using those godstones on him. No one really has, because everyone really hated that Broly for good reason, but you could have him several dupes in, be increasing him as time goes on, and he's just going to do phenomenal. Um, the other reason I didn't include LR Broly is because he's a summonable LR, and those are almost impossible to pull in general, so I didn't want to put him on there. But, that Broly is one of the best cards, and I'm going to recommend you having him on your team. That is a staple rotation right there. You need those two together, and you are going to be, I think, fine. But let's go ahead and hop in the rest of it. So, um... One thing I do want to get rid of is this 17. You're not going to need him. What he did for the longest time was absolve some of the key issues with your main rotation. Um, but you're not going to need him anymore. You just don't. Um, same thing with this kid, Boo. A lot of people used to love Sexy Boo, as we called him, because he disabled enemy guard. That's not necessarily as helpful when you're fighting only super physical types with an extreme STR team. You know, you've got your free crit for your ability. Um, you're facing a per uh, opponent you've already got type advantage again, so I wouldn't really worry about that. Now, the thing you might be asking is, where are the tanks? Where are the walls? And there aren't really any. There are some great tanks, but not really any walls. That's because Super or Extreme STR rather is a functional team in and of itself. I personally love the way this team runs because I would rank it as one of the most perfect teams. Not the best in the current meta, but I think when we go to longevity, um, Extreme SDR is going to have one of the most functionability in a future meta and on Super Battle Road just because of the way it both tanks attacks and delivers a little bit of damage. It's not one of the hardest hitting teams out there. I think that's one of the problems it suffers, but it also tanks a lot better than most teams while dishing out a pretty good amount of damage. You're not running into the extreme AGL problem of not being able to deal enough damage, and you're not running into the super tech before Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, where you were just a bunch of beat sticks. Rather, you've got a 
functional and cooperative team that you can build. And so I love it. And what I want to go ahead and preface is that even the support units on this team are good. And there's actually one I left out. I'm going to go ahead and grab real quick. And you're going to look at me like I'm weird, but that unit is one of the best support units you can bring to Super Battle, to Super Battle Road. Sorry. Um, he and the Hit play the exact same role. They both support the rest of your units, which I know I've hated on support units, but these are a little different. Not only do they give you a good boost, but they both have a chance to stun on their super attack, and that's actually really invaluable. Um, super or Stunning other enemies is really, really good, especially if you target down that first uh, character slot. And this SR has a passive worthy of a lot of SSRs we see in the game. That 20% and 2 key boost is just fantastic. And when it comes to getting Broly all the way up, you know, even with Rosé, you're going to need 3 key, and sometimes you're going to be in a situation where you can't get that 3 key, but with this unit, you only need 1 key, and that's, gonna, that's guaranteed. You've got um, an X super attack, and that's something really to look into. Um, now, of course, Omega makes it. One of the original five god leads, um, he is just an amazing, amazing unit, and I cannot stress that enough. Omega is just uh, amazing as he is. Um, I'm very, very happy I have a copy of him. Uh, he is just one of my favorite units. I recommend him. I can't stress that enough. Have an Omega on your team. Um, now we come down to what's left. So we've got our four kind of set up, and now we're left with our support category. Um, this is kind of a damage dealer, kind of a tank. Same with Cell. Um, Cell can deal good damage over time. The problem is he's never going to be on rotation. So when you're trying to build up his attack and defense, it's not going to work in its best format. And I think that's what holds him back more than anything. Um, we've also got Hyper Meta Rildo, who actually is not a bad card for traditional extreme strength. Um, his defensive passive actually is somewhat useful. The problem is on Super Battle Road, it's so outdated because it's only a flat boost of 10,000 that I wouldn't recommend bringing him. Mask Saiyan is a better tank than Hyper Meta Rildo, so I'm going to recommend leaving him at home. He's just not great. This Samasu is surprisingly good. He doesn't get a high attack boost, and he doesn't do a ton of damage or block that well, but what he does do is every time you're below 80% health, he's healing you up 10%, and that 10% can save your ass quite a few times. It has done it before, it's done it to me. Um, the furthest I've ever gone was when I had someone that can heal on my team. Now, this Raditz, I'm sorry to say, just doesn't make the cut. Excuse me. He's just not good enough on his own to warrant his spot. So now we come down to what our final team is going to resemble, and it's going to be something like this. These are your two rotations. You've got Rose and Broly, who are giving each other, a, or giving themselves each, a really high attack boost as well as a defensive boost. You know, Rose gives, I think, 40 or 50% to all his allies. Um, Broly gives himself a 50% or 80% rather defensive boost. Broly is also an AOE that has S tier stats, meaning he can get to up to 7,000 in each stat. Um, so he, those, that power couple is a match made in heaven. And then you've got Janimba and Omega, who are also really good. Now, Omega is not free to play, but he's acquirable by pay to play players because you could have bought him with the blue stone, which was purchasable. So, Omega, you if you're running an optimal team, like most people are, trying to for Super Battle Road, you've probably got him. Um, you've got Janimba, hopefully, to be able to run, field this team, and you've actually got a good bit of option. Now, something D3 did, which I thought was interesting, was he ran two Broly's, um, which I think was an interesting gamble. I wouldn't recommend it. I think running two Janimbas is better. Um, no, not disregarding how great Broly is, Broly is the best unit on this team. Um, in terms of this uh, game mode, Broly is your best option, but Janimba's blocking and tanking tech capabilities, especially considering you're going to keep one off rotation anyway, I think are invaluable to the um, game. So I would keep the, uh, these two together, sorry, him and him, and then what we've got left are your other two units. So. One of these two, I think, would do really, really well. The boosts they're giving to attack and defense are really, really good. And the fact they can stun is actually uh, really impressive. Now, I would recommend Hit over Hoy, I think is his name. He's one of the guys from uh, Wrath of the Dragon. Um, <clears throat> Hit just works better. He's a, he gives better stats. His stats are better. He's 
not going to form a super attack, but you can probably raise it um, with the hits you've pulled, because the int hit is not good. Um, and he stuns, and he's got a higher chance to stun than Hoi. Um, Zamasu is not a bad choice for someone on the back end, just to heal you up a little bit per turn. Um, and then you've got your LR Frieza and your Cell. Now, if you've got LR Frieza and you don't have him rainbowed, that's a problem. Like I said in my last video, if you've got a furry unit, rainbow them, invest in them, give them stuff. And I know on Global that's hard to do because he's got currently got a 1% drop rate on his event that only comes around once a week and has a really high stamina cost. And that is a fair criticism. That's why mine is only SA6 and it is TUR form because I haven't had enough time to get him to LR despite wanting to run extreme strength. But regardless of that, sorry it took me a second to speak, um, regardless of that you're going to have to have him rainbow and hopefully before some Battle Road comes we're going to have our stage 4 Frieza promotion where we're going to have something like LR Goku where you, know, you can get the 50 stones for bringing him all the way to LR, all that kind of stuff. In that case I will be tearing that up because that is that was one of my favorite moments in Dokkan was that LR campaign. Um, but you're going to want him. He's a really good option off rotation. Cell is really good if you've got him in SA10, if you've got some orbs into him. Um, I don't think by himself he quite warrants the spot. He's a good unit. He is, I would not go as far as to say a great unit. I want him. I love Perfect Cell. Mr. Perfect Cell. Sorry. Um, extreme Strength. But I don't think he warrants a spot on this team otherwise. I think he can work as a very functional choice, but I think if you want someone in that last slot who's going to be better, you're going to have to default that to Frieza. One, because he's got LR based stats. Two, you can rainbow him for free, meaning you're increasing that LR based stats, and I think he just, he does what Cell does better. He hits hard, he links pretty well with your team, and he tanks pretty well. Better than Cell, I would argue. Um, so I think that, something like that is your optimal team chemistry. And considering we've seen it done recently, that's actually really impressive because this was one of the teams that couldn't get through in the beginning. Um, they just couldn't provide enough offensive capability. Now, that was also because people were trying to run with LR Broly and sometimes with LR and TUR Broly and not having any defensive capability doesn't work anymore. You're going to have to have a defensive team, and this team is set up to be offensive and defensive. Cell raises attack and defense. Omega reduces attack, raises his own. Janimba raises his own, guards against all, can block. The guarding against all isn't great, but the ability to dodge like Janimba does, that is what keeps him as the best tank in this team. Um, but this is your best option. I don't know how well Zamasu is going to run, but I know he will if you're, if you're going to run this in a pinch. He's a good choice. Um, he's also got a semi-farmable super attack, meaning you can pull an SR version of him, which will be in every single banner, um, which is something to consider because you can raise him up to SA10. That means you'll be doing a good bit of damage. Um, SR Hoy does kind of the same thing. He's semi-farmable, so you can get him up to SA10. He's not going to be doing a ton of damage, but more is better than less in general. And that's just what you need to focus on here. So, guys. I hope this was helpful. Um, I'm sorry I'm not feeling well. There's just got a bit of congestion right today, um, but I'm trying to kind of power through and get this video out. I also want to go ahead and apologize this video doesn't get up till tomorrow. Um, my Wi-Fi has just been terrible in my apartment complex, so I do want to go ahead and apologize for that, guys. But if this has gone up on time, if you have liked what you've seen, please consider leaving a like down below. And if you're new to the channel, I implore you to consider subscribing. If not, I understand, but you know, if you want to, it's there. Um, also, be on the lookout tomorrow. I am putting up some new types of videos here in the future. I'm actually really excited about some good opportunities. Um, I'm going to continue the series all the way through, uh, but one thing I do want to say is that I'm actually excited for a video coming out in the new format I'm going to do. So, guys, like we always say here, I hope to see you around sometime.